Welcome to Saved, a podcast where we capture conversations over coffee. My name is Corey, and I'm with, uh, with as always, <laughs> Amia. Hi, Amia. Hello. Today we have a very special guest. Some would say um, I'm basically his boss. Um, some would say that. Um, but we have Brian Landfill with us tonight, and we're, we're blessed by his presence. Thank you, Brian, for being here. Uh, Amia, would you like to start off with a question? Yeah, can you give me like a rough 250 reasons why your current boss is the best boss you've ever had, your favorite boss? Great question. And the most amazing person. Great question. I can't believe you came up with that. So, yeah, it's actually really easy. Um, like, I could We're going to skip this because I'm afraid of what he's going to say. I was just... All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, was it good? Well, I only had one, uh, but yeah. it was good. Okay. It Wait, was good, I want to hear it. Yeah, we can edit this, right? <laughs> um, no, this yeah. is live. Oh, okay, so yeah, um, you're not Keith. No. So <laughs> that's what I said. That's yeah, what I said. that is what he said. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, my next question, along the same lines, but actually, I'll take one real answer or multiple. But what are your favorite things about working for fellowship? Uh, favorite things. I think, hmm. Or just I mean, good perks. Yeah, like, the schedule flexibility is pretty good. Like, it's awesome. Like, I get to go to any time there's an event or, like, a retreat or something like that. It's just, like, well, Corey and I are in the same home church now. But, like, I guess tell Kyle, I'll be like, hey, we're going. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, okay. Like, when we were going to Johnny and Friends, mm-hmm. it was just like, hey, I'm going to do this. And it was like, okay. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I never have to worry about, like, if I want to serve the Lord somewhere else, I never have to worry about my job getting in the way of that. Yeah. That's sweet. That's not a normal job thing for sure. Yeah. Just for the people that are listening, what... So Corey's a sanitation liaison, mm-hmm. of course. What do you do? What's your job in a nutshell? Um, clean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do most of the time, clean and organize stuff, for sure. What did you do today? Uh, poured concrete for the basketball hoop. Yeah, I heard you guys dug a hole. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was very, very deep. Yes. Is it still like... There's concrete in it now. Fuck, I yeah. want to see it. Yeah. I mean, you can, technically. But I can't go inside of it. Well. I mean, you'd be there for could. a long time. <laughs> 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 it's still drying. All so. right, after the podcast, we'll go test that out. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Come... F- feed and give water to Amia. She's stuck in a hole. <laughs> She's stuck. I wonder what would happen to your body if, like, it was just stuck in concrete for like a long time. Like, if your head was out and you could eat, and like, well, I don't know how you would like. You die. But I want to know the process. Like, well, I, I bet something would happen with the intestines because you can't, like, you know. Well, what if you leave a little like pocket? Ex- well, it still will fill up. Eventually. Oh, that fill up. Yeah, <laughs> that, for me, I'll be like two days. Yeah, that's funny. Unless you had some kind of like, like a toilet pocket, right? So like you could flush this, like yeah, you, you could make okay, the system get so flushed. So say we do that. How long am I surviving encased in concrete? Are... It's basically the same as people who are on like bed rest and like can't move. And so, like, you would probably develop sores in your body that you can't move, like, like let's say your yeah. waist, like, you're up waist deep. So, like, everything waist below would kind of just decay since you wouldn't be able to move it. That's what it's I said. It's not like circulation. Although, I feel like if you're on bed rest or something, you'll have someone that will move your body for you. That is a big thing, yeah. Yeah. Like, but what, what, so, okay, so I was thinking, like, what if you put in as, like, a kid, right? And then, like, your body starts to grow. Yeah. Yeah, well, most likely a child wouldn't survive <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah, nearly. they're just so fragile. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, we know so much about you now. <laughs> <laughs> podcast <laughs> over. We got it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Shortest podcast ever. <laughs> That's funny. Ryan, was I your first disciple? Yes, sir. Disciple. Yeah. Discipler. <laughs> you were my first disciple. I always get yes. those messed up. <laughs> you were my first disciple. That is correct, yes. Yeah. Was that uh, during JHQ or Chill? That was JHQ. I believe That's I was I in fourth grade, I think. Dang. So young. It only lasted like a month, in my mind. 
No, I okay. I specifically remember one thing that you told me in D ship. Uh oh. When I was no no no. It's I mean it's actually a good thing. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know about good, school. but like theologically accurate. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> and that was uh, I, we were in your basement, you know, by the high school at the house yeah. by the high school, and we were talking about spiritual warfare for some reason, and you were like, yeah, uh, there's like. If like God pulled back the blinds or whatever, like you'd be able to see a whole bunch of like angels and demons fighting all over the place for like fighting for people's souls. And I was like, mm. fuck, because mm-hmm. I, you know, I was twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. That's crazy. I did something good in high school. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, we were talking previously about how I was saying that if I were discipling someone when I was in high school, I would have fucked him up. So. Yeah. He taught you something good, so we we appreciate that. That's good, yeah. 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 So Where was, was you? Oh, I was uh, thinking the same thing, Mia. Yeah, what were you going to yeah. say? Um, JHQ is the first like youth group Bible study you would have been in, right? That's the first thing we do. Yeah. I, will, I mean, does Oasis count? Because that was a thing. Fair, fair. So but, what, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count it. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. Okay, so yes. <laughs> but you've been in... Freedom Fellowships ever since birth, question mark? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Did you start in Bedford? Were you born in Bedford? No. Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no, as questions. far as I've been alive, uh, I believe my parents have lived in Stowe. They, there may have been a... No. Yeah. As far as I've been alive... That's some good thunder. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. Uh, my parents have lived in Stowe. Okay. Because um, my parents moved when I think Sam, my sister, was like one or two, mm. I believe. And so where'd... Because uh, you weren't living at the house on Conwell. Where, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me mark the time. And Eight your away, social easy. security number... Uh, your parents were living at the house that they currently live at now because didn't your guys' house burn down? What? Yes. House burnt down when I was five. Tell that story, please. Um, I was five. <laughs> so the house burned down. <laughs> and, okay, okay. So this is what I, this is actually, I, I think I actually remember a decent amount. So uh, my mom was bringing us home, uh, my sister and I, Sam, from preschool i guess i was in preschool she would have been in like second grade or something like that and we got home and sam was like mom the roof is smoking and my mom was like that's not smoking it's just you know there was snow on the roof it was a summer day not summer like it was starting to get warmer what? but there was still snow on there. Oh, yeah, ohio okay. you know yeah, 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 yeah. and uh she was, it was like, mid-july yeah <laughs> <laughs> and my my mom was like no and uh but when I was that age, I was, like, five, I would always, like, ask to, like, go unlock the door because, like, kids have a fascination with keys, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was, like, I'm just going to go, you know, do this this time because she was, like, kind of concerned about it. So mm-hmm. she was, like, you guys stay in the car. I'll go, you know, make sure everything's okay. We were, like, okay. Uh, we were hanging out. And then my mom opened up the door and, like, basically as soon as she did that, like, flame shot through the roof. That's crazy. Because uh, it, like, let all the oxygen in. Yeah. Um, so then we were running, walking quickly, uh, around trying to find somebody that had a phone. Cause like my mom didn't have a cell phone, yeah. I guess. I don't know. She's yeah. <laughs> um, so we were like walking around to all the neighbors trying to find people who were home that we could borrow a cell phone to call 911. And, uh, yeah, I remember I was very concerned about, um, one of my stuffed animals called Big Dog. Aww. I was very concerned about him. And uh, what else? Other than that, was I worried about the cat or was Sam worried about the cat? <laughs> I don't remember. Did the cat survive? No, no. Aww. That sucks. Uh, smoke. Luckily, it wasn't like burned alive. Yeah. That would have sucked more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so... um being involved in the fellowship, I actually remember I knew you guys' house burned down before I came to fellowship because me and Sam are in the same grade, your older sister. Yeah. Um, I remember in like third grade, um, we 
like the teacher announced to the class like to ask our parents to like donate stuff Mm -hmm. Hmm. and so that's how uh i found out and then like i put it all together i'm like oh my gosh like when i first came around (laughs) yeah this is the kid yeah but um yeah so uh i'm assuming that you ended up getting a house or staying somewhere like what happened after that like i bought a house yeah you bought a house with all your money um so we for a little bit we stayed at um what was their name tony and Faye. slaybaws um so they were kind enough to like let us live there for like a week while we were trying to find uh you know somewhere else we could live and we did eventually uh get a like a what's it called a condo i guess i don't know Mm -hmm. apartment whatever uh, by Walmart. What are what are those apartments called? By the Walmart no and Stowe. I don't know. I don't remember. But we were there for about a year while we were rebuilding. Hmm. I remember that Easter was like Christmas because like the fire department and probably also you know your families mm. uh, donated like so much stuff, and there was mm. just like so many toys. And I was <laughs> like, this is great. That's awesome. <laughs> We should do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> How many houses until people get suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So do you have more siblings than just Sam, or is she it? I have a half-sister, Kim. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is, uh-oh, 30-something. I'm going to say 30-something. That okay. feels safe for all, all okay. bases. <laughs> True. And she has a kid? She does have a kid. She has three kids. Wow. Yeah. And one so, of them go ahead. is my best friend. Which one? Henry. Okay. Yeah, we're besties. Wow. So, you know. He's he's all right, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, one time when he was coming to visit, he stayed at my apartment, and uh, we tied him to, you know, like those poles downstairs? Uh-huh. We tied him to it with uh, an electrical cord. Oh, my God. Because uh, he just kept hitting people, and I was like, stop, or I'm going to tie you to the pole. And he didn't, so I was like, okay. Nice. So we tied him to the pole and started throwing balls at him. That wasn't a part of the deal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> he loved it. So, growing up, uh, were you closer with uh, your mom or dad? Growing up? Mm. Uh, mm probably mom just because dad was like at work or working in the garage a lot Mm -hmm. but like yeah man what was uh your relationship like with uh both your parents like more in detail um i mean together like i've always had a good relationship with my parents both of them uh if i was ever worried about something or needed help with something like they made it known that i could ask them and they would be willing to help out um so that was always, like, very comforting. Also, what I'm super grateful for my parents for is they uh, were like, if you act responsible, we'll let you have more responsibilities. Like, mm-hmm. if you act like an adult, we'll let you be treated like an adult um, mm-hmm. and things like that. So that was always great, uh, and I appreciated that from both of them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've, I've always had a pretty good relationship with both my parents. That's cool. And what were you like in uh, high school? Did you... Did you want, like, your friends to know that you were a Christian, or uh, did you try to hide that? Or that um, like- I would say it was, like, I didn't super try to, sh- like, share it very much because I just either didn't think about it or didn't care, like, got afraid of it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, if people asked, like, I would tell them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, a lot of the people that I would hang out in, in high school with were already, like, coming around to ministry or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they're, yeah. And so when when did you make the decision to receive Christ? Uh, when I was six. Mm. What led you to that decision? So I remember, this is my first memory, actually. Second one, just kidding. First one was a nightmare. It was terrible. <laughs> um, but uh, I was lying in bed. My mom was, like, tucking me in. And, and uh, like, you know, she was going over, like, how do you get saved? What's going on? Uh, and she was kind of explaining that, like, okay, so the thing about my mom, she's she's very much, like, 
total depravity person okay mm-hmm. like she's like you deserve to go to hell mm-hmm. and so from a very young age i've i've known that i deserve to go to hell yeah. um and also it's clear to see if i look at my actions mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. at that age um so i was like okay don't want that um and like obviously i've done bad things uh but she was like explaining like but that's like you don't have to because like jesus died for your sins so if you accept a relationship with him if you accept his uh gift for you then like you won't go to hell and he can come and live in your heart and help change you and i was like that sounds pretty sweet <laughs> yeah so she left and then uh prayed then when when she left yeah hmm. that's really cute and so you're six years old when that happened I know for me, because I received Christ when I was like five, so mm-hmm. basically you got a one on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were born first, so really, you still technically received Christ before I did. Anyway, yes. not the point. Um, I was definitely like, oh my God, was did that work? So like from that moment, like when I think that I first did it, I literally would pray like, I don't know, every week and be like, I don't know if it checked out. Do you feel like you experienced anything like that? Or were you just like, cool, it's my um, life? Not, like, to that degree. Like, there's there's been times, I think, like, maybe two or three times where I've been like, I'm going to just do it. Yeah. Just in case, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> just in case, like, I didn't have enough information the last time or something yeah. like that. I get that. So, like, that happens, like, maybe once every five years. I don't know. Fair. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, nothing, like, every week or anything like that. It doesn't continuously happen right. to me every week. Let okay. Me, oh, okay. Let me, okay. Let me okay. say That's good. that. <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't think I've thought about it like that in a while but yeah yeah. when did you uh start taking ownership of your relationship with god because i know that has to be hard um or just like add another level of difficulty growing up in a christian home where it's like you can just you know keep on flowing by because your parents are christians and they're bringing you to um our fellowship and stuff like that but when did you decide like this is something i want to do um well i've so I've always wanted to, like, go to home church mm. or, like, a uh, prayer cell group. I've always wanted to participate in those. Mm-hmm. Um, but for actually, like, trying more so to love people, I would say middle of high school. Um, so, like, sophomore, junior year, somewhere around then. And then senior year is when I was like, okay, like, I actually have to go. Like, if I if I want this to be what I'm about, and then I have mm-hmm. to actually, like, put in the work to try and learn how to love people, to be willing to sacrifice for people. Um, yeah. Hmm. So what happened in the middle of high school that, were you not wanting to love people before middle of high school? Uh, a big part of it, I think, was that I just didn't think about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you said, it was just, like, easy to skate by mm-hmm. uh, and be like, I'm just going to go to these things, blah, blah, blah. But uh, in high school, it was like there was a push for me to become more of a leader. And I was like, well, I want to do that. And it was like, how do you do that? And it's like, oh, you love people. Mm -hmm. And I should have been doing this the whole time. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that was definitely a good push to like help uh, to like do that and want to sacrifice for people and learn how to do that Mm -hmm. in a real way. Mm -hmm. Did you have... Like, in the period that you were still in high school, do you feel like you had victory with that? Um, I think, I think definitely my biggest victory with that has, like, uh, like been with Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, I've known him since middle school. Mm-hmm. And, like, he was pretty easy to, like, hang out with and get along with. <clears throat> but uh, having that drive to actually start to care, care about him more yeah uh like definitely helped our relationship a lot were you the one that brought him out i was not oh okay yeah wasn't that amani amani and Mm. faith yeah Mm. makes sense that's cool though you kind of like took him under your wing Mm -hmm. so uh knowing you for a while um (laughs) you were always uh the the kid that tried to act tough when we all knew he wasn't that tough. Right, yeah. Mm. And so uh, explain what that looked like and where that came from. I 
don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, I think I just liked fighting, like, and I don't know why, like, where that came from. Like, I didn't get in a fight. I've never been in a fight in school mm. uh, or anything. Um, but, like, I just really liked wrestling, really liked trying to fight people. I don't know. Did you like winning or just liked just wrestling? Uh, for a long time. When I was a kid, it was definitely more liked winning. Um, it's gotten to the point now where it's actually just like, I just enjoy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were a kid, was it like a anger motivated thing? I was a very angry child. Yeah, that's, those are like most of my memories of us as kids was. Yeah. Anger. So when, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when I was a kid, I think a lot of it was definitely anger motivated. Mm-hmm. Uh, just cause it was like, you made me mad. I'm going to try and fight you. Um, because I was angry at people. I don't know. But was there a reason that you were angry at people? No. It was just very easy for me to get very angry very quickly, um which luckily my mom was like super helpful in. Mm-hmm. Uh, cuz she had me memorize a couple verses um when I was pretty young. And those were helpful for like just calming the fuck down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so do you feel like then in conjunction with your experience in high school of learning to love people, was that something that you had to like battle through or were you mostly like over your anger at that point? Did that not really affect it? Um, I think by high school it was like I learned how to get my at least like physical violence anger mostly mm-hmm. uh, under control. Um, so I wouldn't like go around punching people like I would do as a kid. Um, but I think like inwardly it still made it kind of tough because there's definitely times where it's like, I'm going to like withhold love from you because I'm angry. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually Zach Rosler pointed that out to me in discipleship and I was like, oh fuck, that's not good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I've been working on that. Yeah. (laughs) That's cool. So jumping out, um of high school you've conquered a lot of your anger issues um well yeah at least like stabilize them Mm -hmm. and learn to deal with them and uh you're saved you're walking christian and trying to take steps towards leadership now after leaving your house and kind of being on your own now and becoming your own man um were there any difficulties that like struck you right away like oh wow like you're not being like held by your parents anymore and like you're kind of doing your own thing now um not that i can really think of like my one of my parents goals when i was growing up was like we are going to teach you how to be an adult so when you leave you can leave Mm -hmm. um which is another thing i'm very grateful for from them um so like just immediately i was thinking like basic maturity things which i don't know if that's what you were asking or not but like having a job like doing laundry cleaning yourself Mm -hmm. can you cook can you go grocery shopping um like I, i never really had any problems with that um i think definitely something that did become more apparent after moving out was like I am a lot more autonomous than I thought I was hmm. um so like just like leaving and like not saying where I'm going mm-hmm. like I've I've definitely just left before and gone camping for three days and then my, somebody in my house will text me and be like so where you been <laughs> and I'm like oh yeah I gotta tell people these things uh so that I guess that's the only thing that really like jumps out at me right away what made you like want to go just camping by yourself? Uh, I think, I think what it was is that uh, I was teaching a home church, and I was like, I have not worked on this teaching at all, so I need to leave. <laughs> and so I was just like, okay, <laughs> and I just took a tent and left. That's kind of awesome. Not the autonomous part. Yeah, but yeah. In theory, it's awesome. It would have been awesome if I just was like shot a text and was like, hey guys, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Why do you think that you are 
autonomous? Like, there are there reasons behind that? I think, well, I think a big part of it is um, because, like, my parents taught me how to be able to take care of myself. Yeah. So, like, I don't have to rely on other people for, like, basic life things. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably a big part of it. Um, but also, just, like, I don't super like people. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, uh, if there's, like, a way that I can leave a lot of the time, like, especially when first moving in, like, mm-hmm. a lot of times I would just take that opportunity and be like, oh, I'm going to do something uh, good anyway, so mm, yeah, don't have time to love people. Sorry. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I I can relate with that because um, I definitely like doing my own thing and, like, uh, I don't know, I like, I like just having quiet time, like, everyone mm-hmm. get away. I need, mm-hmm. like, I get peopled out very yeah. easily. Yeah. Um, Same. And it's kind of striking. I don't know why because I'm a sanguine. I wasn't like that in high school, but I don't know. I'm probably going to think now. about that more. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, what what strikes me is odd and something I want to uh, talk about is um, the fact that you were you, – you don't strike me as a person that wants to avoid people and, like, uh, want to do your own thing and be autonomous. Because you, it seems like you, you really want to be with people all the time. Mm-hmm. And do you notice that in yourself that you have like this internal conflict or is this something that like, maybe I'm just not understanding? Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, thanks for saying that because, you know, I've been working on it. <laughs> uh, it is like a lot of an internal conflict because it's like, I don't want to be with people, but I'm here so I can love people. Yeah. So why would I go do something by myself? Mm. Um Cheeky. especially if I especially if the only reason is just like I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like that it's just dumb. But that is a thought that I have to like fight through a lot. Mm. Yeah. Has the Lord given you like resources or tools or a partner to help you like fight through those thoughts? Um, I think Colin was very helpful. Like when we first moved in, Colin mm-hmm. Maring. Um, cause a lot of the time, like I would just be sitting on the couch or like sitting upstairs and he'd be like, there's the hangout. I'm like, I know. He's <laughs> like, are you going to go? And I was like, <sighs> yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'll go. That's funny. Uh, and I can think of a couple times that happened. And then I was like, why do I make this so hard for, like, him and me? Like, why am I making this just so difficult when it doesn't have to be? Hmm. Um, Yeah. Are you the kind of person that, like, when someone gives you direction, you want to do the opposite? Or do you want to, like, are you more like a legalist where you'll do it out of guilt or whatever? uh, um, I'm a cleric, so do I think it's a good idea? (laughs) <laughs> if i think it's a good idea then i'll follow the direction okay. if i don't then i'm like that's dumb i'm not doing that yeah so i'm prideful yeah <laughs> no i'm just wondering like how that works out in scenarios where con is like or whoever is just like oh you should do this thing like because you have this internal battle already of i should do this but my flesh doesn't want to do it so i don't know just like i think a, a big thing there is like I don't want to, but then it's like, oh, hey, somebody's coming along. And what was very helpful is he wasn't like, you're failing. Mm -hmm. As he was like, oh, you should go. Like, it was very encouraging. Like, oh, yeah, you should go to the hangout. Like, I'm going to go. You can show up when you want. And Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Um, So it was just like the encouragement to do it, I think, was the biggest part. Because if I, definitely if I feel judgment, judgment, (laughs) judgment (laughs) from someone, then... uh, I will just lean more towards, shut up, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then actually have to think, 
through that process more of like do I like is it accurate is it like is what they're saying true anyway yeah even if they are being a dick about it Mm -hmm. now from something I noticed from working with you is that you seek for approval or you really want approval would that be correct I would say I want that in work because I want to know if I did something well enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if that if that stemmed from uh, like wanting to wrestle, like especially as a kid, like you wanted to physically overpower people to like get that internal like approval, like I I'm more powerful, like I I mm. won, I'm mm-hmm. victorious, um, and then resulting in like your anger as a kid too like huh, I want to I'm really angry because I'm not getting what I feel like I deserve or mm-hmm. getting the recognition like or I'm angry if I fail because that means I look bad mm-hmm. and like going back to the image thing because the image um, is growing up as a Christian kid like you know your yeah. image is quite pristine Mm -hmm. compared to others but as you're growing up now it kind of just like follows you like oh i need to do this right and if i fail this is really bad Mm -hmm. and uh it's it's not that your parents taught you that way it's just naturally just grow up where it's like i need to do right i need to do good and so do you feel like you still have that now where you are focused on your image and have a hard time failing and um i would say so yeah uh it's gotten a lot better but there are still definitely times where uh, like a, a big thing I'll struggle with is just like I won't try something because I could fail at it. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> and that's and that is really fucking funny because mm. a lot of, the biggest area that that happens in my life is in witnessing to people, mm. Um, mm. and you know relying on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, amen. So I'm really glad we're teaching. You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ryan and I, for those that don't know, we're teaching tomorrow night yeah and uh for a retreat i'm teaching on acts one two and three oh, i'm gonna bring up four wow. two so one two three and four <laughs> and, the and 28 rest of the book. <laughs> yeah we're just gonna teach all the acts <laughs> in okay. less than 30 minutes hopefully um yeah but something that uh i always tell people when they're when they ask like what's it like working with ryan I always point out that you you come off like you're just some crazy guy sometimes. <laughs> um, like you're wrestling people and always picking on people, climbing trees, mm. and you do doing climb trees. wildly crazy things. Like uh, we just found a picture the other day, I forget who I was God. with, of you eating raw chicken. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. in Columbus. my God. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of guy that you come across, but I always want to make sure people know when they ask me, I'm like, he is so smart and and no one, not no one, but a lot of people don't know how intelligent you are. Um, like I always refer to you as my calculator (laughs) (laughs) because numbers to me, like I love working with numbers and data, but boy, oh boy, do I get just like, I, I can't think I'm like, what is this ad you're like that's 356 i'm like thank you right <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah i mean you're not just smart with numbers but you're you're a very intelligent guy doing well in school going to civil engineering uh mechanical mechanical engineering, engineering. technologies right. met yeah. yeah i mean yeah, you yelled at me for that last time <laughs> that's the only uh engineering joke i know where <laughs> met is not as good as me but what? it's i don't even care i just <laughs> okay okay honestly I don't either. Yeah. When you... You're going for mechanical engineering. Yeah. Which is smart. Currently. Yeah, very smart. Um, a lot of numbers. And... <laughs> yeah, so I just want to commend you on that. Like, you're you're really smart, and you're doing well in school, and you surprised me. Like, uh, you were taking Python. Weren't you taking a Python course? Or uh, No, I was just... Or coding. You are taking some coding course because you're just like, because I want to learn it. What was that? It was last year. I was just learning it. I wasn't Even taking better. a class on it. See, like, that's something that just amazes me, where you can 
you're just interested in learning something that has nothing to do with your degree, <laughs> like quite the opposite. And uh, it's like, I want to learn it. And you did. Like, you're not a master at it. But, um, <clears throat> I don't know. So I, I, you're very valuable to work with for sure. And uh, I just wanted to commend you on that. But um, I forget what I was going to say after that. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to recount many memories of you and Theo battling it out, both physically and mentally. Mm. And obviously, like, Theo is loud and proud about his intelligence, so people know. But, like, you were the one person that could, like, really shut him up or just, like, win. Praise the Lord. Which just didn't happen very often. <laughs> but, yeah, it just speaks to, like, you're obviously, like, like Corey was saying, you have this like crazy energy or whatever, but you're also definitely very intelligent and you can do math. And that's like, <laughs> that's it. That's all we're you need. So, really. We're so proud book. of that's you. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which obviously like the Lord has gifted you in that, which is really sweet. But I'm wondering just cause I don't know this about you. Like, what do you think that your spiritual gifts are? <clears throat> um, I think there's a couple that, like I think, and then people have like mentioned other ones that I'm not as sure about, but the things that I think for sure is um like leadership or shepherding um mm. teaching, and that's all my brain can think of right now. Mm. Those yeah. are good, yeah. What's your spiritual weaknesses? <laughs> Evangelism. <laughs> yeah, we're screwed, dude. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I would agree that you definitely have a gift of leading because all those guys flock to you and want to follow your leadership there. That's something that I, I've noticed for sure. But uh, I want to go back to... Um, your anger and where that is now in your life. And um, because I want people to know you're not the only person who is angry and struggles with anger. I know a lot of people. And so what are some things that um, you've done and the Lord has taught you to, to cope with this anger and uh, how does it play out in your life? So I think, I mean, like I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my mom was very helpful. I, one of the verses was Proverbs twenty nine eleven, uh, which says, uh, "A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps it under control." Mm -hmm. And I was like thirteen, twelve or thirteen, and it's like, what teenage boy wants to be a fool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so I was like, hmm, okay. Um, and then the other one was the Ephesians, what is it, four twenty six? The do not let the sun go down in your mm -hmm. anger. Do not yeah. give the devil an opportunity. So. Still know him, <laughs> um, but I think that was very helpful. And also, I think just like recognizing, like recognizing acting out on my anger, like where did that leave most of the time? Like where did that leave things off? Because mm. um, people don't like getting hit or stabbed most of the time. <laughs> uh, found that out, and I was like, okay, so. It's like, that's not good. That's not helpful for the relationship. And then especially in high school, when I decided that I wanted to try and love people was, and I have to, I mean, I have to basically just give full credit to the Lord because he, like when I decided that I wanted to start and try and love people, my anger became a lot of like, basically anytime I would get angry, it was like, why are you angry? Most of the time, it's because your pride's hurt in some way, shape, or form. Mm. You're like you said earlier, like you're not getting something you think you deserve. Mm. Which then mom's total depravity kicks in, and it's like, okay, well, I deserve hell, so can't be that <laughs> mad. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, okay, well, what can you do to like love this person instead? Um. And so a lot of that, like that kind of cohesive thought process, was very helpful in just not acting on it as much i guess i guess like having god put you in your place is very helpful yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I love the simplicity of um what you're saying and this is where i appreciate the way you think um 
because I'm a Mel. And so I think about like, why am I angry? Well, it's probably because of this, but this also happened. And then it's like, but I feel this way about this certain thing. Too. <laughs> and then I just like, am in this hole. And it's like, well, I can, you know, draw out on this whole wall of the reason why I'm angry. <laughs> and you're just like, I'm angry because I'm not getting what I want. And I deserve hell. And um, the Lord is gracious to me. Mm-hmm. So I should return love and not anger. Simple. Yeah. It's like you, you just look at his word and it's like this word says this. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to act on his word and not what I think. Yeah. And it's a, it's a very valuable. You, the way you think is very valuable to Mel's. And so I hope. I know uh, Alex Martin is a Mel, so I'm sure you're extremely valuable to him. Um, and he's probably very valuable to you. He is, yeah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, you're a lazy thinker <laughs> yeah. at times. And so it's uh, it's good to have someone challenging you to think a little bit deeper mm-hmm. and uh, get a little bit more emotional there. Um, one of the, to wrap it up, I wanted to ask you, where do you want to be in five years? What do you, what do you see yourself doing in five years? Yeah, that's a loaded question. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> in uh, this chair. In this chair. Yeah. Well, I might be I in wouldn't. this chair. If we, we cement if we, you if, in there. Okay, well, we'll I was do a five year follow up. Five year follow up. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> okay. Uh, I, that's a very broad, open ended question. I don't like with what. Um, do you want to? I want to graduate. I I hope you do I too. hope I graduate in five years. Do you want to be married then. in five years? Uh, f- yeah, I think so. That'd be cool. Yeah. Do you uh want to lead? Yeah. I I was thinking, um, like when I was I don't know eighteen or something like that. I was like, I want to be a deacon by the time I'm twenty five, and now I'm like, I, I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> How old, old are you? Twenty two. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I definitely want to continue to like try and step up and lead more. Uh, hopefully, like have some more fruit with people hmm. uh, that like I've specifically worked with. I think that would be super exciting. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, Amia, would you like to do the honors? I would love to. Ryan, what do you think that the Lord has saved you from? Everything. Myself, mainly, actually. Um, That's what Yeah. Also, Fred. it's a great Is answer. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, answer. I took it from Fred. But oh, yeah. Okay. I think. Um, I yeah. Like my immediate thought was just like hell, duh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, see the logical yeah. way of things. Simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, okay. But like, it's actually been so much more than that. Like, mm-hmm. like my anger, my uh, unemotional, don't caring about people, uh, anything that. I have struggled with, like I know he's worked on and I know he's still working with me on. So it's like, what does he save me from? It's like all of these things. He saved me from uh, everything that I give up to him, essentially. Because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, he's not going to rip out the things that I don't want to give him. But, yeah, yeah. Fair. Very cool. Yeah, it's sweet. Well... We got to get an outline together. Yeah. Uh, for his teaching. So. Nice. Mine's done. S- same, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I'm excited to teach together. Yeah. I think it'll be fun. I'm excited for this retreat. And uh, I appreciate working with you. You've grown much. Uh, for those who don't know, you're an intern level two. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, just so. just got that. Uh, wow. Yeah, just got it. Like a month ago. Do you have any level ones? Uh, don't no. don't ask questions. No, no, no. no. Okay. We don't ask questions. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Ryan Ryan is an intern level one. Yeah. What? Yeah, Ryan yeah. Yorger. Yeah. Oh, because sometimes he most alive. Calvin. And Calvin is okay. uh, also yeah. intern level one. Well, sometimes I sit here and I record podcasts. Yeah, but you are not getting paid. That is. That's why you I'm, could. I'm level point five. I do pretty much nothing. Um, You're a volunteer intern. <laughs> yeah, I volunteer to do something that uh, serves me and you. Okay. It's a level zero. It's like Laura. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We yeah. appreciate our interns. Laura, 
I wouldn't count her. Oh. I just wanted to say that <laughs> so I can totally listen to this and she'll hate me for it. But uh, that is it.